<laughs> with, with enough saran wrap, anything's possible, right? And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Old Man Ven in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, switching the bits, piloting this nightmare train joined every week by the man up north one, Jordan Spong, and staying up a little bit late, but he's alive. Yes. He's dreaming of Mustangs, not the cars, the horses. It's kind of weird, man. Covered in ears, Mateus, we like to call him together with you. Shot Realm Dynamic helping us form. Cocaine. Voltron. There we go. I'm out of Barfy DJ voice. <laughs> I thought you were going to say dreaming of mustard because we were talking about mustard before. <laughs> What's up, ladies and gentlemen? So you might uh, go go ahead and uh, get your sticks together. We, we might have some fires this evening because I'm definitely playing with it. Because <laughs> the first thing I have in the show notes is a very clear explanation of something is not a kludge if you can automate it, right? That's where sure. you got to draw the line. Like if you have this Rube Goldberg amalgam Akira looking bit of technology, but the end result's functional and you can script it not a glitch that's a solution you know you can sell it to someone well that's kind of where i'm at right now man uh i really don't want to buy a 500 dollars modem board <laughs> i don't think you're alone in that one no i, think most I, I don't I, I don't think a lot of people are like man i can't wait and like i've been waiting for coming up on two years now for that's a super micro motherboard for somebody to have one on eBay used or for them to use. And like, nobody, nobody's fucking around with it. Problem with a $500 motherboard is I can buy a new AM. I can build a new AM5 system for 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. I can pay draw a check. I asked permission. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. I can. <laughs> you, you asked, you asked Gemini and Gemini yes. said it was okay. Gimli was just like, yo, dude. So no, nobody like, tosses $500 into <laughs> an AM5 system. <laughs> Why, why, why are we even looking at Epic? Because I got a bunch of capture cards, got fiber cards. I like, I have four by 16 slots. They're full. I need more. Can we find a way to reduce that? We got to get rid of the 13 HDMI cables between these three PCs and the Threadripper. <laughs> How do we do that? Well, we already have audio over IP. So we got rid of all the audio cables a long time ago using that jack. Can we do that with a video? I've messed around with that in the past, and WebRTC, whip, web, whap, whoop, is Wipe. coming to OBS, but it's kind of slow going. But I, I got that kind of plugged in, playing with it, and I'm like, it's not quite there yet. It's been a minute since we visited our old friends at New Tech, NDI, and we got NDI 5, plugged that in, got that installed, started shooting stuff back and forth, and I'm like, you know what? This didn't immediately crash, so let's use it live. Do you think this is going to end up on, on the new tech website again? Again, right? <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, you know, I did learn enough. I'm like, I'm going to have to make another one of these guys because <laughs> this is completely different than it used to be. What we're doing... Now, nothing, nothing's crazy here. Okay, each of these is connected to a PC. Easy enough. They're down here. They're little butter robots. And except for Jordan's. Jordan's is like a 5600G because get Rex on. My, 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 mine's a butterball turkey, apparently. Right. <laughs> Traditionally, Jordan's video, you know, it's connected to the... Uh, PC bone, which video comes out, goes into the monitor, but before it does that, it hits an HDMI splitter. Then it takes a trip over to the thread booper, which has a quad 4K capture card in it, which is one of those big slots. Same way with Pedro, same way with the guest box. That's not too bad. NDI just goes boom, OBS starts up, captures the screen, sends it over the fiber. Not a problem. But I got to get video back to these guys. And that's always been the pain in the ass, even from the dark days when we were doing like, Stop motion frame. <laughs> it was we were a, on a Skype trope. for all yeah, video yeah. and the audio, and we were using the Hangouts for the return. The hangouts, <laughs> like, right. I mean, just, I mean, it wasn't even video. It was like reference frames for what mm -hmm. was going on in the show to help us keep track. Because, you know, we've always done the show, and that was like one of the things of being able to see what is taking place. You know, we're not trying to watch a Twitch stream of what was going on, you know, 10 seconds ago. No, that that's the challenge because I got to get, you know, traditionally, I just have another capture card with a video out from OBS that does a composite, sends it to another HDMI splitter, which splits that back out, which goes into all the HDMI capture cards connected to these three PCs. Like, how do we do that? So we're using NDI on the Threadripper to send out a uh, one signal. Since these have OBS open, 
They're capturing that signal and we're using the virtual webcam inside of OBS to capture that scene to generate a virtual webcam to connect to Jitsi, which goes back to that. And it hasn't exploded yet. Yet. I think uh, uh, some part of that technically constitutes misuse, but uh, it works. <laughs> Pedro, I'm like but it, it's 90, scripted. 90, no, well, about 90% right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's still technically Kluge because it will remain in Kluge until I can hit the on button. And that's it, because that is the previous system of like, oh, how do you use set of, oh, I just hit the on buttons and I wait for them to start up and like we're done and everything's synced up and ready to go. But we will find out. Jordan, have you taken a break from eating all of the um, pickle and vinegar? Chris, I can't believe you don't like salt and vinegar, Chris, man. I I don't. I I, I just I just don't like them. Uh, do you not they're, like they're, salt? Or do you not like vinegar? I do, I don't like vinegar. Okay. Um, I yeah. guess that there might be a connection there. I'm not 100. Yeah, well, maybe. I, so it's like it's it's not even that I don't like vinegar. I just don't like the specific just salt and vinegar. When there's like vinegar and other stuff, when it's like mixed in with stuff as like part of like a marinade or something, like I'm fine with that. But like vin- vinegar on its own, not not really not really my thing. Um, yeah, so I, so the moral of the story is all of Ven's chips are safe because I ain't touching that shit. They're all, they are all pickle in salt and vinegar or salt and pickle vinegar. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and I'm thinking of like a little like spray bottle to like mark things. Oh yeah. yeah. It's just mark, mark your territory with vinegar. It's not deer piss. It's just vinegar. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. Down in the there's, lab there's, trying there's, to engineer like salt and vinegar pizza. I'm like, this will get them. <laughs> no, the, the, like you literally just coat your house in vinegar, except for like a little circle that I am restricted to like a oh, fucking dude, demon. Dude, yeah. yeah. It's like the fucking line in the door. I'm like, ah, it's, it's, it's... damn it. Let me in. No, <laughs> no really. What's been going on, man? Oh, honestly, not much. It's just been a, a, a week of a lot of meetings. Um, had to. I think I'm finally getting over the myriad of shit that's wrong with my body. That's nice. Yeah, th- things are clear. I can breathe. I can kind of sleep again. It's good. I, I hope you have I, a nice little like respite before me. you breach the age where shit just starts hurting for no reason. Oh, things already hurt for no reason. Well, things hurt for a reason. It's because I stick dumb weights on my Yeah, I see. Yeah, that, 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 that's amateur shit. The advanced mode. <laughs> Because, like, right now, I was talking about that on uh, Friday when we were doing Trackmania. Come play Trackmania with us if you want. We'll be back on Tuesday. Uh, the Going through the, ah, oh, my shoulder hurt. Then you go, two days ago, like, right, right, I, okay, I, I deserve that. Versus getting up halfway through, my shoulder hurts. What happened? Nothing. <laughs> it just fucking hurts now. No reason. You didn't do it. Not your fault. There's no bruise. There's no, like, ding in the wall or anything. Just good old-fashioned... Like, the, the, that that cartilage just isn't there anymore. It, it just starts sucking like that. Something to look forward to for you. Yeah. <laughs> but me. but but hey, that's that's what the lifting pauses to fix. There you it go. Make, it make it makes that go slower. So All right. I, I, I'll I'll delay the the random pains until I'm much much older. Pedro Mateus wants a motoring vehicle the size of a cyber truck, <laughs> and no, no and nearly as safe. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. I really don't want a cyber truck. Uh, <laughs> it looks neat as a concept, but I really don't want one. A Shelby GT500 KR, on the other hand, I, I, I'd be down for one of them. But, <laughs> when, you, when you look at a Cybertruck and go like, that doesn't scream <laughs> douche hard enough. It needs to turn into a giant robot. Like, why can't Elon do this? Why, why can't I plug it into my brain and turn it to Optimus Prime? There are, you know, you the, can, the, there, are to those, do <laughs> there are those cars that you look at them. It's like, okay, so you're not comfortable with the size of your penis. You look at a Cybertruck and you go, you're not comfortable with the shape of your penis. Okay. All right. I, I, I look at a Cybertruck and I'm like, how did you escape the PlayStation 1? <laughs> maybe they're just like, you know, retro gaming enthusiasts. And they're like, maybe, always wanted maybe. to drive a Pixel or a Polygon. Uh, I right. don't know. <laughs> I know this is. And, I, I very much like. Um, I'm going to go on record as like that original too. prototype <laughs> Cybertruck looked a fuckload more doper than the production model. Oh, the, no all of the concepts, all, all of the concepts, seems to look better. There, there was a Peugeot uh, a few years ago that was really, really nice. Like the concept was a legitimately good looking car, and then the actual release version, which is the electrical ones that they have nowadays, they look like but. <laughs> do you do you think there would be a market for like the Persephone for like the Homer car these days? No, 
No. No. Not no. Air, 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 soundproof chamber for your children with like a built-in TV. <laughs> Just for like <laughs> that, maybe the Simpsons. The what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> with with enough saran wrap, anything's possible, right? We're not putting the horse in saran wrap. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit well then i gotta remove a bunch of the plastic wrap maybe stick it in the microwave poke some holes in it with a fork it's the steam so it's it's been a slow news week at uh spacebar.news and so uh we we have to talk about the the incoming time bomb you know alfred hitchcock once said that if you stick steam underneath a table and make it explode people will still write articles about how awful steam is so yeah this is this is this is talking about the theoretical initiation the the concept that like services are now just making themselves worse because they have captured all possible users and the only way to grow is to extract more value out of both their users and their suppliers as they've implemented um, a middleman this is actually Yanis varoufakis wrote a really interesting book about that that i would recommend you and he would know about it uh, but no, anyway, from the distance, I know human babies. <laughs> he eats human babies and his wife is smoking hot. Uh, but anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah, the um, but yeah, they're talking about how um, Valve uh, or rather how uh, Steam is sort of has become the de facto default place for PC gaming. Uh, the Epic Game Store tried to um, give out trying to supplant it by giving out free games. Um, and no, no one has really been able to make a dent in this. Um, and there's. Uh, one of the p- points they bring up is like, well, other platforms are suffering. Like Apple, the 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 uh, the Steam experience on Apple uh, is not very good. And I quote: "Valve isn't obligated to continue supporting all of its games and software features on Mac, especially when Apple's reluctance to natively support Vulkan and other cross-platform technologies makes game development more complex. There's no excuse for Steam on Mac to be far worse experienced than on other platforms, though." Uh, uh, I can think uh, of a couple. Uh, uh, no, cognitive dissonance <laughs> is a real bitch on that so, one because yeah, so, like, that that so, is so, the excuse. You just fucking said what the excuse no, is. No, no, so, no. Like, listen, so, someone man. did not read this article before before posting it. Um, Dude, uh, th- this is this is a reflex reaction. If you bought a Mac, <laughs> right? <laughs> but but like, and here and here's the thing. Him him ringing warning bell, warning bells about this isn't necessarily a bad thing. But Valve is not your typical VC backed tech company that needs to be profitable all of a sudden because interest rates are not 0% anymore and money isn't free. Um, having all our eggs in one basket with, with Valve and PC gaming, it's probably not a good idea in the long run. Unfortunately, no one has really come up with a suitable competitor for this. The Epic Game Store is, they, they bring this up, it's just a shit experience overall. Uh, even like I, I get free games from Epic and that's literally the only reason why I use it. Um, the games aren't necessarily cheaper on, on there. The, the shopping experience is worse. The discoverability is basically whatever Epic decides is free this month is the thing that gets promoted. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like this is the whole thing, man. Like Valve, Valve sucks less than its competitors. Like that, that's it. That's all it has to do, which is just big. Strangely, it's gotten easier and easier and easier as uh, this enshittification mm-hmm. continues on. And, you know, that's not a ticking time bomb. Like, that has been a proven business strategy for them. Like, so we just sit, sit and not do anything, huh? Valve time it. You just don't actively dick people around EA, Ubisoft, Epic, so on and so forth. And uh, people, uh, turns out, they're okay with your platform. And like oh so I, you got to be extra nice and sweet no 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 you just go, wait yeah, so just you don't dick with people actively try to dick over our customers <laughs> maybe, keep, maybe just like no no just and dude, come on just, just a little dicking like no <laughs> and 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 the reality of it is Valve has been shown to be pretty willing to engage with the developers that work with them they're willing to work with open source communities to get things working and to make things available for people um, in a broader sense. Uh, helping out other companies like Code Weavers in the process, right? Like Code Weavers has a bunch of money coming into them because now companies are paying them, like Square is paying them to QA games on Proton. Um, so like th- th- it's they're very much doing it in a sense where a rising tide lifts all boats. So could there be a heel turn? Probably once Gabe gets the space worms, I'm pretty sure then Valve is going to turn evil and we're going to need to start worrying about it. But let's see some actual Today competition is not first. That day. No. Uh, the, the article seems to cut off at the point where you'd expect the evidence of the full enshittification of Steam will commence. Like, okay, uh, y- you're getting to it, so no, the article just ends there. Fuck Maybe, you, Pedro Mateus. Exhibit A. 
There's no <laughs> Steam Controller 2. Well, there isn't. But people really, really like the layout on the Steam Deck, so maybe, maybe Valve could, you know, shrink mm. that down to size. No, nope. <laughs> never gonna happen. <laughs> because Steam Deck controller enthusiasts, 12 of us, which I'm not, I don't even consider myself one of them. Appreciator. Appreciator. Not, not, well, uh, connoisseur is probably too strong a word, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Owners. How about owners? Steam controller P- owners. Possessor, yes. Yeah. Get yes. off our lawns. Uh, They're here. This, this it came, came with Dexter Rocket League, damn it. Com. And like, there's really not much to this. I mean, a couple of people are like, yeah, we, we love these. They're interesting. And they were. Mm-hmm. They were. And uh, two weeks ago, Jordan and I had a very interesting experience where we, in the after shows, we effectively sat down and forced ourselves. We got our Steam controllers, uh, hooked them up. And we played through some Quake 2 co-op. And it was it, pretty fun. At honestly. first, it was a damn nightmare. This was, we were just talking no. mad shit the entire time until like maybe the halfway three quarters point, And we both at roughly the same time were like, yeah, we're kind of feeling like it, it wasn't a great experience in the sense like, yeah, you'd probably rather be playing with a keyboard in trouble. But I'm like, this is workable. Like, yeah, it, it it is completely passable. Like, yeah, I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to like PVP against someone on a keyboard and mouse. But like, right. if I want to sit back in my living room and play Quake 2, I could do that reasonably well and like, yeah. have a solid experience doing it. Pedro, do you think uh, if we ever get one like that? Because like I the steam controller to me always felt like it was just missing something. It was missing and a right analog stick and it was missing valve. a D pad. Uh, the dedicated D-pad, yes, for like the that's got D-pad lines on it. Shut up. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. But yeah, mm-hmm. no. The 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 right analog stick was the one that most people genuinely and rightfully complained about the lack thereof. And the Steam Deck kind of proves that if you have a dedicated D-pad and if you have a dedicated right analog stick along with everything else and the two areolas and all the buttons and the two little um, back buttons. You have a damn good controller. The uh, author of the we article the says it's like, too. yes, like the gyro is very much a big selling point of both the Steam controller and the Steam Deck. And uh, maybe you'd like to build your own controller with a really, really precise gyro implementation. Input labs.io. Um, it's legitimately the Steam Deck. hold that up, somebody like, he's going to send it back one day, though. <laughs> Every time he holds it up, they send him like a if nickel they, over PayPal. If they ask for it back, I will send it back. Until they do, I'm not gonna. <laughs> they're, they're like, you touched that too much. See, I, 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 I completely understand that mentality because I'm like, I, I'm in this uh, YouTube YouTuber like creator Discord that like I have no more business being out with these people, but they invited me to like solve it, settle a Linux debate, and I, I think I was supposed to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. This is, this is like, this is fun yeah, to watch you. Yeah, no, no, you, you, you got Dracula, man. You invited me in. No, I'm not it, leaving. I, I, don't, I don't participate. I keep my mouth shut and I learn and read because them and their employees have their chats about the algorithm shit. I'm like, I can learn stuff in here. But yeah, yeah I, I feel you on that, Pedro. The, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, it is. You uh, got to say something. I'm not doing shit. I'm just being myself right now. The Alpaca is a genuinely nice controller. And the fact that you can just download everything that you need to build yourself your own is awesome. But if Valve, and I think they have the technical chops to do this, just scooch everything a little bit closer and make, keep the layout the, as the, it is the, on the, the Steam the, Deck, the Steam just Witch. make it a little smaller. It's yeah, a little sandwich, a little, yeah. yeah. And six layers yeah, of you, AA you batteries. You will have a very successful controller at that point. <laughs> here's a couple of things I need to do. Here's here's probably what's going to end up happening. Valve. The Steam Deck 2 is going to have Steam Chucks. <laughs> Steam Chucku? Steam Chucks. Like the... I, I, I like the to ones, uh, yeah. Switch style. <laughs> Just to fuck with the Nintendo. Valve's that type of company. <laughs> No, no, no. They they need to like fit it on some kind of pole arm, like a halberd or like a glaive or something. <laughs> I want the steam chucks because I still want that controller we were promised ten years ago. That oh was, yeah, that, that 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 one that splits in two. Yeah, yeah. That that yeah that you could use like half with a keyboard and mouse or whatever. Yeah. yeah. That man, I wish that 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 was a cool idea. I wish they didn't steal everyone's money. That was a cool <laughs> idea. But the, the, the more I think about like the, the Steam controllers, they took a shot with it. I don't see Valve necessarily ever going back to revisit that unless they 
do a steam machine then that makes sense but well, I, the, there, there were people in, in like this in uh, our Steam controller and like our Steam Deck talking about how like how it's kind of they, they use the Steam Deck not with the dock anymore because they like the controller on the Steam Deck better. Mm-hmm. And they would like to use it in dock mode, but you, you got to use like your, your hot pink DualShock 5 or whatever, right? Like, and I don't think they can ever really recreate the Steam controller itself as it because of no, games, they got sued right? for yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but but if they if they if they just make like the Steam Witch, if they just like combine the two ends of of the Steam Deck, yeah, yeah th- I think that like, that, that, that would very much work. And since they're buttons, the two back buttons or four back buttons, as the case may be, uh, not paddles, then that doesn't fall into the patent of uh, that company that is owned by I Corsair. Need Pedro, <laughs> how dare you? I need the paddles that are really cool to have, but I'd never use them. Yes. <laughs> To be fair, though, like the on the Steam Deck, the way that you hold it, if you have like, you know, fingers here, Mm -hmm. these fingers just rest directly on the buttons. Like the design, the ergonomics for the Steam Deck are just perfect in that respect. So, yeah, just make it smaller. Scooch everything a little closer. (laughs) No, no. What we need is also like a VR display that you can put on your head that connects to it wirelessly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, we got a couple of new games for you this week. Starting out with uh, this is like Manos Hardcore, right? Pump action Manos. Yes. <laughs> this uh, this doesn't completely eschew the cards. They're still there if you care to engage with the mechanics of Buckshot Roulette to that point. Uh, but yeah, the the thing here is you're playing Russian Roulette with um, shotgun. 12, 12 gauge shotgun. And yeah, the, the first time I saw this was um, Nori was watching a Markiplier video and he was playing it. And I'm like, that looks a lot like Inscription. It's made by a different person, but it's got the exact same vibe. Uh, and yeah, it is basically you have Coney 2012. <laughs> <laughs> you have the uh, like the shotgun and some of the shells are actual shells. The other ones are blanks. And you have like attachments and other items that you can use in order to um, manipulate the odds and stuff. Yeah, yeah. basically shift the thing in your favor uh, or yeah, just play the game as it comes. And now there's the double or nothing mode uh, and it's now available on Steam because th- this game has been out for a while. It's just only come out on Steam on the fourth, but it was available on itch before then and it's pretty cheap it's uh currently a part of the lovecraftian days bundle so if you want to pick it up now's the time (laughs) yeah they got that uh they got that linux native build which means you can get your russian roulette on the go on the deck Mm -hmm. and multiplayer is coming soon that would be fun for multiplayer right like it's a bluffing game with with you and your friends yeah yeah yeah, yeah, i'm down that would be that would be weird in VR though, like yeah. a VR Russian roulette game. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like I, I just saw saw some buzz about it. And I'm like, ah, yeah, let me just at least go watch a video because I was just curious. You know, I was like, Buck Shots of Faith this is going to be some furry top down JRPG pixel. We're like, nope, missed that one. And uh, yeah, lo and hold, lo and behold, even it had a Linux build. So yeah, and it's super cheap. If that uh, you know, if you've been dying to play some, and I think this is more about like the meta game mechanics yes. inside of everything else than like just what it says on the tin oh yeah there we go job done oh wait hang on there's more yeah we we got to talk about savior lists because you know if you can't get a copy of the savior gang anymore to look at old beardless jordan uh you can go uh play this game which has little girl jordan I, 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 I don't know um yeah this this is a cool little um it, it has a really cool art style but it is a 2d action platformer um where you gotta become the savior and you can take on a couple different forms uh in order to uh one where you have to like fight people one where you have to run away and yeah then then you brought up in the show notes it does does give me like a another world or that kind of game vibe Mm -hmm. um there, there there was that other one too on playstation that i'm completely spacing on that was like clay animated or something it was very very similar to did, another did, world. Was, was it like a big muscly deer? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. What 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 is that? Like is is the is the is the enemy here like Cerberus the Aardvark or something? That's, I don't that's what he know, looks like to me. Like, like, like dude does not miss gym day, whatever's going on there, man. Um yeah, I yes. saw it and yeah, hundred percent another world vibes from that. However, that being said, 
long as it doesn't control like another world <laughs> right right yes there's <laughs> fuck where, where where yeah. and, like yes. five minutes later the animation happens <laughs> like you know they're having to jump over those uh doom space leeches like that that is where like uh 99 of the people quit playing the game right there yeah no it is it it, it looks okay but uh i i'm still not over platformers if it's just a platformer i mm, no that guy looks happy <laughs> he's, right. he's very smiley <laughs> Bunch of smiles. i mean so are, so are these guys they're so happy yeah like if you squint that's just fucking blasphemous pedro uh yeah blasphemous had a a bit more of the action that was a bit more of the focus was the action and the ex- uh, exploration here it's it's very clearly about the platforming <laughs> I mean, Blasphemous was like slow and boring, though. Kind of like me. Don't don't, 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 don't insult let's boring talk like about, that. Let, let's talk about horse punching. <laughs> oh yes, uh, it's fighting games on Linux. You we know, don't get many of them. I missed that. What she said, Chuck. My bad. <laughs> My apologies, everyone watching. All right. Them's them's fighting herds, and uh, if you follow the. Um, fighting game uh scene as much as some people who leave youtube comments on our videos uh you probably know that them's the fighting hurts that is that about? A, a bit of a rough history there we got a comment i don't know if it was last week or the week the, before a, a couple of people think i have very bad opinions on skull girls i don't know yes, what they are uh, specifically about skull Talking girls like the, because yeah. uh, apparently uh skull girls made the main stage at evo but them's fighting herds never will and now we know why apparently mm. <laughs> because uh yeah that's the last version isn't it yeah th- this seems to be the last uh update it's revision two of patch six zero zero and they have some changes and they have some balance issues. Uh, but what they don't have is the rest of the story mode. And if you go look at the Steam reviews, people are painting a fairly grim picture. Apparently. I mean, not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> 28% it's, of I mean, the now, admittedly, it's, it's 35 <laughs> negative reviews, which is 100% of the player base. But. Pretty much. <laughs> And yeah, no, apparently the games industry happened and the publisher laid off a bunch of the original developers. So people are not pleased that the story mode is effectively incomplete and will never get any further development. And uh, as far as we can tell, this is the last update that the game's going to get. So yeah, people are pissed and uh, rightfully so. I was so, going to say, did they, did they ever fix like the oversensitive <laughs> movement in the Linux builds? Oh, I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. probably not. Probably this, not. Uh, <laughs> like some of the, some of the disconnect, though. I mean, it's a fighting game story mode. Yeah, why weren't you upset in like 2021, a year after this game came out, and that wasn't done yet? They had chapter one, and people are saying, I mean, "Oh, we're gonna get more as time goes on." What about 2022? Fire. Then, then hey, brace yourself, 2023. <laughs> I guess but listen they 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 are being patient and now that now they find out that nothing will ever come. There the, there, the, there was you at least roll hope. back and go the fuck were y'all doing? Yeah. They were, <laughs> they, they they were playing the first chapter of the story mode over yeah, and over and over again scanning it for every minor detail and constructing elaborate fan theories obviously. Uh yeah. So yeah, it was like I, I that sucks but I mean online still works so I mean you got it and it's a 4-year-old game and be glad something like that ever got made. You know, because it, it just started out as a fever dream, and it, 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 it was a fan it game. Yeah, yeah. The, that that mm-hmm. got turned into like an actual Lab thing. Zero gave him the engine to play around with. Like they 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 they, they did all right. You got twenty dollars worth. You thirty five people that are foaming mad. <laughs> that, that, that's the something, thing. Something, something it had mad cow disease. <laughs> it, it had the furry appeal. It's like, ooh, it's the furry fighting game. Fair enough. <laughs> and unfortunately, it seems like it's just not going to survive uh, if those reviews are anything to go by well i mean i just like pick and choose your fucking battles like i mean again i'm glad something it was a joke fucking fighting game like it got way too serious and like yeah it's, <laughs> it's, it's a legitimate i'm not saying it's a legitimate fighting game now and i'm like i understand that but i'm talking about the fucking horn be glad it got as much traction as it did you know it's my <laughs> little ponies friendship is kick-ass have fun with it it's unfortunate that sucks and it happens to games. Now, who remembers Vocaloid shit? 
I'm still <laughs> vaguely unclear on Vocaloid shit, honestly. Well, you thought um uh, Bad Apple was Vocaloid. I thought it. I I was that was what it was told to me originally. So I don't. Know. I, I don't blame you. I didn't know <laughs> that there was a. If you don't know, look up Bad Apple. If you've never heard it, make sure you listen through it all the way through and thank me in like two months when you're still humming it. Now, <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. And yeah. uh, you you hear it and you would think Vocaloid, like oh that's digital. Then then it's like a live performance. I'm like oh what type of mm-hmm. like oh no that's just a lady singing that. Oh, yeah. well played. Uh, uh, shmups, Japanese shmups. Look up Doho if you don't know what that and is. Look up what it's uh, based on and go. That's not the same song. Why? Why did somebody want them to be related? Yes, because <laughs> those two songs have nothing to do with each other. But re- related this, to this, Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Yeah, vocal you might remember of it. the Necro Dancer specifically because we're getting um, Hatsune Miku. <laughs> Yes, that Hatsune Miku, and uh, don't worry, there's enough no, not, not weebs on our Discord that I don't feel lonely <laughs> in being the one person who knows about Hatsune Miku. <laughs> I, I, hey, I, I, you know I'm what? I didn't. What, I, what? I knew it started with an H. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I am aware of what Hatsune Miku is. Damned if I have ever heard a Hatsune Miku, Miku song, quote unquote song, I guess. Um, but yeah, the, the uh, other songs, they, yes. They brought this into uh, they brought this into Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Um, they have uh, some Hatsune Miku tracks and a, and uh, two new ones from the main composer of the game, who uh, uses the Vocaloid to make some new songs. And yeah, you get some musical themed abilities. That's a bunch uh, of tracks, man. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. it, yeah, yeah. And uh, the the Danny Ben Baranowski ones are the two original ones. So uh, yeah, that's pretty. Neat. It, it might it, it might bring in some weebs who are on the fence about Crypt of the Necro Dancer or some diehard Hatsune Miku fans who are like, oh my god, I need to own everything she's in. <laughs> There, 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 there is quite a following of uh, Vocaloids and Hatsune Miku in particular, though they do say that it's like, oh, she's bringing her uh, spring onion to battle. It's like, okay, A, it was that a leak. Nasty. <laughs> and, That's nasty. Uh, and originally, it was uh, Inoue Horihime's shtick from Bleach, the, that one scene from Bleach that got taken way out of context. <laughs> I thought it was Farfetch'd from Pokemon. <laughs> he, he also had a leak, yes. Sure. Though he didn't spin it around. Uh, yes, he does while, in, uh, in, the, in the fucking anime. He spins oh it around. Oh my god, nerd fight. <laughs> in the anime. This is okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one last update. Uh, you might have um, kept in mind that uh, April 1st rolled around. We, we had some good April, April Fool's things going down this uh, did, did you guys see anything that was particularly interesting on Monday? Oh, I don't remember, honestly. It's kind of a... My bad. face in the mirror? <laughs> That's the inner thing. Uh, do, we, do we have anything in our memory? Uh, the, the, uh, what was it? Cyberpunk on floppies? Oh, yeah. That, there was that. Uh, I, yeah. I, 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 do, I do remember that one. CD yeah, Projekt Red, y'all need to be careful with that type of shit because there's some motherfuckers out there going, I would buy that. Yeah, it, t- it takes what a was month it, straight of floppy swapping to yeah. Yeah. And yeah. N- n- Nobody wants it on your cheap-ass floppies. They want it on Real to real tape archive. No, I wanted on. I wanted on those five and a quarter inch like floppy floppies, man. All right, all right. And uh, oh, uh, one of the gaming chair companies like came up with a stupid chair that I thought was pretty good. It was like, oh the, yeah, 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 it just yeah. completely circled you and had grips for everything. <laughs> yeah, nothing uh, too wild. Let us know in the comments if you saw anything that was tech related that you enjoyed that we're completely spacing out on because of the way the internet time works. That was Monday. Like, what was yeah, that Monday? Right. Nothing happened. <laughs> One thing did happen, though. A little game called Silk Song. Silky Slims? Yeah, there, there was an announcement. You know, I saw it on Reddit first, and later I saw it on Twitter. On April 1st, it got a store page on the Xbox market, which I didn't even click on, because go to hell. <laughs> something, I something Australia. <laughs> I, I don't even need to deal with this stuff, man. And uh, yeah, an ESRB rating, and I'm like, I, I didn't read any of this. I ignored this, and I, I didn't come back to this, and like, thursday maybe wednesday and i'm like oh that was real so okay team cherry well can played uh, they got that out also dex don't toy with my emotion like this uh this just brings up a question for me you know it's not an april fool's joke we have no further information somebody from the xbox team you know like hey is this for real and they're like stay tuned for more and i'm like i've been doing that for six years Dex. <laughs> um, 
Here's my thoughts on this song. Silk Song. Let's just apply this to a bunch of games because we're getting old and we can definitely look at a different couple of different titles. Uh, very interesting question, at least I think so. How long? Because Silk Song has been in development. You know, this was like supposed to be DLC for Hollow Knight. Years went by and we're going to make it its own game. Everybody's being patient. But how long can a game be in development before the DNF E3 effect, which is your Duke Nukem Forever Part 3, kicks right in? And we're talking about that point that will happen. You know, I'm sure there's tons of other games that other people know about that I don't know that are just in development for so long that there's a, a, it's a zero win situation. You cannot live up to the hype. Or just the expectations people are going to have for the game when it releases. Like, you know, you got a ticking time bomb in your hand right there. Like, we, you can never release Half Life 3, gentlemen. So, I, I, okay. So I, th- I think Half Life 3 is definitely, definitely probably a better example than, say, Duke Nukem Forever. Cause you, you got to remember the other thing about New- Duke Nukem Forever is that that game was shit. They tried making that game like four or five times. They kept changing and, engines. Yeah. Kept, and, and, yeah. And, this, and this was the end result. So when you when you compare it to something like Hollow Knight Silk Song that maybe is going through a similar phase, maybe maybe there's something to it. But also, um, like quality games require work, and some and sometimes you need to take the time to create a polished experience. I don't know if this is what the the Hollow Knight people that, are doing. Uh, well, I mean, we, we, here's the thing though. Here's the thing. That's that last part. Sometimes just the gaming. Well, so ha- Half Life okay. Two. Half Life Two had like a very long wait in in between Half Life One and or since Half Life One, and that was well received. Uh, Alex was very well received. It was not Half Life Three, but people really liked it Different for what it was. People with VR headsets. Yeah, but it, it, <laughs> yes, it, it, it was all good. three people with VR headsets who could play it properly and really enjoyed it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So 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 like I, I don't I don't know. I think I think this is like one of these things that we retroactively apply. After it's done, because like what we have games that you can buy right now that are still in development that people are playing. Look at early like, access has changed I, things at, up a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, Star but, Citizen. Then all we that look shit, at games right? that are just not in early access that you're just waiting. Because what I'm saying is 100 true. Because we witnessed it. Like I just brought up the two examples that came to the top of my head that have come out, and this will happen. It's just natural. But like if you stay in development long enough, the game market itself can shift. The interest in the game that you were working on six years ago could be like, eh. and I can speak from my personal experience for waiting on a game, waiting on Silk Song. I'm not at the like, it'll never live up to the high point, like whatever. I'm not that person anyway, but I can see the tip of the hill of like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like that's where I am personally as a human being, individual, one person here on a podcast right now. I, I guess the other thing too, thing too is like. The first Hollow Knight is a huge game. So if you're going to be like releasing a follow up to that, you think people people are going to like expect something of the same size or bigger, right? Uh, Silk Song is like a billion times a bit. But OK, here's another factor. Scope creep. Yeah, that, 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 I, I mean, and, you, and that can yeah, certainly you fall can't in there, really right? avoid that. You can't Especially if you, you set a deadline and stick to that shit. <laughs> game, Pedro yeah, Mateus. unless you have a producer that's writing your ass to stick to the deadline. Uh, but yeah, it, I think scope creep and feature creep in general is kind of inevitable, especially if you have something as popular and as well loved as, um, hollow Knight. because yes, you want to make it better. And I think that somewhat justifies, okay, it's been six years. Uh, that's cool. I think six years is fair. If you want, especially for a small team to improve on something that was already very, very good. I think it's fair. Ladies and gentlemen, pixelated pigs with a side of crab. Breath of the Minecraft, baby. They have a new release out. Velerin. I, I would say these days Velerin is probably the prettiest open source game out there. Like, look, look at that shit. Like, this is this is boxes and in the distance that looks gorgeous. Uh, but they have a new version out. It's not 16. Uh, it comes with a bunch of updates. Uh, there are some new biomes, Mesa biomes, not Mesa drivers. I feel I have to clarify <laughs> on the Linux podcast. Um, and also uh, servers can now share plugins with uh, clients when they're joining a server. Which is probably pretty convenient if you're joining a server that has a bunch of mods, but also hopefully no one does anything naughty. Also, OpenGL support. 
And how they got through that was pretty neat because they're doing it through web GPU. We talked about web GPU as like potentially a way to um, target target uh, graphics cards without having to necessarily worry about platform. And Velleran's been doing this to a pretty successful degree. So that's pretty neat. I just like it zooming is. out all the way. <laughs> yes. Now we got airships <laughs> and a bunch of other shit, man. So yeah, what, what, what game isn't better when you update your... <laughs> Hack skill tree. I mean, come on. Like, that's just a love letter to me. I'm like, yeah, you need a skill tree for your axis. Like, sure, let's go. It's pixelated. And now <laughs> available in Esperanto. Oh. <laughs> oh, man, this shit got me speaking Esperanto. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> that's all you had to say. Uh, pretty cool game, man. Like, I, every time we talk about this game and it gets an update, I'm like, I'm going to, because I played it once for just a few minutes just to test it. And um, we need to, like, sit down and, like, create some characters so that we can, like, jump into a server at one time in an after shows and eventually one day before the mm. death of the universe. Uh, something you can't pay to win is a game after it's been taken offline and uh, people are mad about it. Or a person's oh, yes. upset about it. You know what? Uh, I'm a huge fan of something I've been trying to preach for the past couple of years. Be the fucking change. Yes. And uh, if there was ever a time to take action about companies, especially big publishers, taking games offline and effectively removing your ability to play the game that you paid for. Uh, well, now... It's that time. Uh, mostly, uh, this is an effort started by Ross Scott, the voice behind Freeman's mind. Don't you mean uh, the mind behind Freeman? Yes. <laughs> Effectively, the mind behind the voice behind Freeman's mind. Uh, it, he basically saw this opportunity because at one point, Ubisoft, in their hubris, uh, decided to... Their Hubrisoft. Uh, Hubrisoft. Uh, decided to brag that... Uh, the crew, the first one, had 12 million people playing the game. And then, um, at the end of March this year, 2024, they took the servers for the crew offline, which means those 12 million people can no longer play the game. So in the US, the, there's basically very little that people can do because they buried the, in the terms of service that they can uh, effectively take your purchase away from you because... Yeah. Uh, uh, thing is, video games aren't just sold in the US, and Ubisoft is technically based in France. So there's a very, very big push to make, um, basically, just take, if you own the crew at any point, just take as many of the actions as you can. It's, it's all, the website is stopkillinggames.com. There's a list of what you can do. Basically, it's uh, already, you know, laid out by territory. Uh, just pick the one that you would fit into. Go through everything. Do as much as you can, because this is one of the best choices uh, and chances uh, at this point to hopefully get companies to stop killing games. And this isn't... <laughs> Like a lot of people are saying, oh, it's their companies, they're, they shouldn't be expected to lose money by keeping a server online for uh, forever, effectively. This isn't about that. This is about allowing people to continue to play the game without having a server running. If you can't do that uh, right now, release a patch in the future that enables the game to be played completely offline whenever people want to. Or even better, start developing games that don't require a server that's on the whole time. I did a quick look up of just MMOs that were shut down on um, Wikipedia. There's 222 that have just been dis disappeared because the servers are gone. You can no longer play them. Uh, I found the, the most complete list that I could find of uh, community projects in efforts to... Pull one out for Club Penguin. Yeah, to keep those games alive... There are 62 as far as uh, the MMO folklorist website could find. There are 62 community projects for those 222 games, which means 160 MMOs that you can no longer play at all because of corporate negligence. 
Yeah. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm reminded of like how some fashion companies will destroy their stock rather than have access to maintain scarcity and maintain their stranglehold on supply or, or grocery stores for that matter. Uh, but yeah, uh, Ross is recommending that at least if you own a copy of the crew, you have to, if you want to file a complaint with the DGCCRF, which is the French Consumer Protection Agency, you have to, uh, first contact Ubisoft and provide proof that you did. Um, I checked the uh, Canadian petition because I'll be like, yeah, you know, I'll sign it. Uh, it is not up on their site yet. And oh, God, that Canadian petition website is fucking awful. I highly recommend Ross. Once that petition comes up, include the direct link to it because that site is just complete poo poo navigation. But it's a valid point. Um, and as we we're, we're, we're going to be talking about this more in, in the next story. But um, as more and more games are using server side components, this will become more and more of a problem going forward, especially as games fail to find their markets and their publishers will want to shut them down because they don't want recurrent spend. Uh, one thing that Ross brings up in the uh, in the video that is kind of like their soft negotiation point is they're actually OK with um, put it, having companies like actually release the, the source code to uh, server components so that someone could uh, so could theoretically reverse engineer the server. But as Ross brings up, there's also some you could abuse the fuck out of this if you were so inclined. <laughs> so this is not actually within the uh, petition itself. Uh, they have. Um, so, yeah, 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 um, I, I'm, I'm all for this. And I think this is this is a really good idea. And I really wish that or I really hope that um, they can get some uh, motion, especially if the French Consumer Protection Agency starts putting their boot down on Ubi's balls. That'd be nice. We've talked about it uh, time and time again on this show. You know, we've definitely spent time between breaks and the after shows and the pre shows and just kind of spitball. And we're like, well, what would be a good solution, a compromise, or just a way to prevent this from happening? Now, out of the three of us, how many of us own this game? What the fuck's wrong with you? Uh, admittedly, it came free with the 970. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. That, that's. <laughs> Without the difficult multiplayer, so I, I got it. Um, how many of us have bought a game, currently have a game, let's just say currently have a game in your Steam library, that if it goes offline, that's it. That's dead. Probably I have few. several MMOs in my yeah. Steam library that are not several. MMOs. I have. I, I'm sorry, I can't back you up with the MMOs, man. I'm like you. You know what the fuck you signed up for there. Man. <laughs> I, I, but that's I the mean, thing. I don't agree real. with it. No, I'm not defending it. I'm just saying, like, there, there's like, I mean, I'm trying to think of like a game, like you know, a first person, a game that would otherwise just be like, yeah, the, well, uh, if, if you like Diablo. If you're if you're a Diablo fan, you have Diablo you have Four is one of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the Sim City they had, they had that Sim City that had like online always online DRM. Mm -hmm. DRM they did they did patch that out because they someone found out that you could just turn that off from an INI file. Yeah, yes. they're like fine, <laughs> fine, we'll do. It. But um, I, I, again, um, Ross brings up uh, live services where you can buy a lot of like stuff in there, and then what if that game ever shuts down? Your your microtransactions are gone, and you know you 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 can you can say like yeah don't don't buy stuff for microtransactions, but like that's I mean, I'm that, going that, to say kind of, like it's, for it's, it's me victim personally because that's the right? only person I can speak for is myself is that solution of like I don't think I would ever buy a game that was online only that because I'm kind of pick about you know I you're talking about somebody who runs a track media server you know hosts himself. Um, and that's one of the reasons for the longevity of that game. I, uh, I'm seriously trying to like think, cause I, there has to be a game that I purchased that I just cannot play anymore because, uh, you couldn't run a local server. Uh, that's my little bit of advice. May, is that too much to ask? Like the research have, we as gamers fallen to the point where we can't. Well, to, uh, to, 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 to Ross's point, a lot of games don't even advertise this. So you have to go out of your way to research this, yes. which is, that's going you know, to Google. I'm, that it's still I mean, it's my money. It's, you I, I, can I mean, uh, do your own caveat am tour. Uh, now, yes. If but, I was like, no, if they said, Hey man, no, don't worry about it. You can download the server. Right. Cause it's usually like, can I get a dedicated server? Is this going to die? And they're like, no, nah, dude, don't worry about it. We got it. Like in this case where they're like, it'll never go offline. Don't worry about it. And like, you said that you got a case. I'm just thinking about me personally. Like 
how much how much research how much fluff do we're we gonna like no 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 the average person us yes of course we would be able to figure that out but the average person they would be drooling on their keyboard too hard to be able to the figure ar- well, that the, out the, the average person isn't gonna care right until they they get the rug pulled out from under them and and that's the, the point person's not gonna give a shit period they're just gonna keep rolling they're playing no, they're, mobile well, games, no, they're, baby. They're, 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 they're going to say, no, that sucks, and go to a different game. But that's a shitty environment to exist in, and we probably <laughs> shouldn't let companies get away with that kind of behavior. Hence, this thing. We so really what we're going to end up with uh, is a, more of a push and incentivize companies to move to cloud and streaming, where they don't have to worry about this. Uh, the, they'll have to worry about people complaining that the games are worse. <laughs> but then again, and, we've seen the uh, just how bad games have gotten lately, and you have both Microsoft and Ubisoft claiming that their more recent games are quadruple A, whatever the fuck that means. Uh, and it means it's got four A's. I, 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 and, and I mean, like, I, on, honestly, I would see that I would like to see this extend to to cloud gaming, either like to al- to allow some form of retribution or recompense when you know you shut down when you shut down a game or a service, right? Like, so I what think do we the, think the, about like getting games on Steam? Because I've had this conversation with you know, because like we're talking about that. How many times have you guys like, why well, don't buy games on Steam? Yeah, I will buy them on GOG, and I'm like, well, you don't buy games on Steam in the first place. You don't own any of those fucking games. You just, you're fucking, you got a license to fucking play the game. That's all you got. Yeah. That, that, and and, and, and that, that, that's a rotten situation to begin with. If I had my way, that kind of shit wouldn't exist again, at all. So. Valve have specifically said themselves that they don't force Steam as a DRM on anyone. Mm-hmm. People can use Steam as a way to, you know, le- make sure that your purchase is tied to that particular license for that particular game. But there are just as many, if not more, DRM-free games on Steam than there are on GOG, just because there are so many more games on Steam than there are on GOG. And yeah. you can just have, just release a game on Steam without any DRM. And, it's just a delivery method. And <laughs> yeah. honestly, like, the, the, the barrier that Ross is proposing is pretty low. The game just has to be functional. It could, they could basically pull a Rocket League and shut off all the online services. As long as you can play single player, you're good. That's mm. that's what it, that's what See, this boils do, down to. And now they bring up Rocket League. I mean, I guess that technically counts because if they shut down Rocket League, you can't run a dedicated server with Rocket no, League. You, you cannot. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're stuck. You, you can only local, play local against multiplayer, bots, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. No, you can use Steam about. Remote Play. Yeah. <laughs> that's a valid solution. <laughs> oh man! Uh, now you got to think about like the um, innovation that this fucked up situation has generated over the years what's the uh online that they use for the fighting games the uh rollback no 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 the games that don't have online multiplayer anymore the servers are gone and it simulates it's kind of like remote play it's got a name it's a piece of software that i've seen max million dude use with kenny and the other guys it's like low latency somebody will like throw it in in a minute not like Hamachi or something. Or, it sounds or like it's, Hamachi or something like, 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 that's like a, that. It's like a VPN or something. Or, yeah. Or, okay. Um, to, to, to do LAN games over the internet. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, okay. or like local, you know, where you can give yeah, somebody, yeah. you know, your control player two effectively, right? Yeah. 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 Pretty cool stuff. Uh, yeah, go sign it. If you're in a country and you got the game, you know, don't do it if you don't have the game. No, because that's going to No, look this bad. is very much if you have the game, because this is trying to set up a legal Insignia? precedent in as many countries as possible <laughs> and it's ubisoft so nobody's really got a soft spot for yeah fuck them <laughs> fuck them yes. in the ear if you <laughs> got screwbeed man go um don't get screwbeed there we go yeah. take if you get screwby <laughs> take it out on ubi there you go with that with that crewby a little bit of data mining right here uh, towards the end of the gaming report of the 2024 it seemed like just yesterday it was 2024 jordan I know, but now it's 2026. How time flies. Yeah, this is uh, the console gaming report from New Zoo. Um, If you wanted to, you could have them email the slide deck to you, or there's a slide share where you can just scroll through it like I did. And yeah, there is, um, this is basically a bunch of number crunching by a bunch of business wonks to say, what's the deal with gaming and PC and console gaming and the growth and some of the trends going on? there, there's a lot. There's a lot of information about how um, a lot of um, there's like what forty game, forty three games that are composing of like ninety percent of total play to- time of the past year. Uh, what um, a bunch of a bunch Every of. Every time I say Nuzu, yeah. I think Mikazu. 
Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, 60% of playtime in 2023 went to six-year-old games. Ben wants to talk about that. A lot of that had to do with uh, live service games and like um, like stuff like GTA V, Fortnite, um, to a lesser extent, player known, unknown battlegrounds, to a greater extent, Roblox. Mm -hmm. um, where these, these these are like six year old games that people are spending time with, and they're saying that you know as these live services become more and more uh, prevalent, and as they as they become more and more embedded in the game in gaming industry, all games are going to have to compete against Roblox and Fortnite uh, in terms of marketing space. Um, they talked a lot about how the um, like what almost over fifty percent of the revenue from games came from premium content, so that's like the uh, deluxe editions of games with like all the extra crap um dlc still made like 30 percent of the uh of of that uh, purchase so we're so we're seeing a lot of like external monetization in, as opposed to like the actual pricing of games but games have also sort of stayed solid uh consistent in terms of their actual monetary price um they talk about the um the effect of cross-media platform or cross-media support uh bringing up stuff like the mario movie and last of us about how like if you have a clear vision of what your um of what your multimedia uh, campaign is going to look like you can use that to draw more people into your uh, existing games they're also talking they also mentioned that uh overall game growth is going to be slowing over the next couple of years uh and more and i think that's going to mean that there's going to be more of an emphasis on like premium and dlc and extra stuff to extract more money out of the existing games uh than just selling new stuff also, I do like the uh, yeah. the breakdown of they do it right at the start too, which is the okay. Here's the PC players. Here's the console players. PC players, uh, about fifty six percent of the games are premium games, like the ones you pay up front. Uh, then you have like thirty percent is from microtransactions, and twelve percent is from DLC, and the rest of it is effectively subscriptions. And then you have the console players, which they have 57% of premium games. So they pay console players more likely to uh, pay for the game itself up front. But PC players have the advantage on both DLC and subscription. So uh, how, does that, how does that work? I mean, I can see why, because it's much easier to type in your credit card and everything else to just make more purchases on PC without having to do it via controller. But uh, you'd think with the console market beating, get, being as big as it is that people would invest more on DLC specifically, maybe not subscription. I don't know, man. Like I, I don't buy much in the way of DLC. Like usually I, I will buy a DLC if I really liked your game. And a lot of times it's just me saying thank you and I never touch it. You're in the minority of PC uh, people, apparently. <laughs> what really tickled my pickle was 60% of playtime in 2023, ladies and gentlemen, went to six-year-old games. Huh. Fortnite. So <laughs> yeah, I'm not Fortnite. alone. <laughs> when I say, when I was at the beginning of the show last week, I was like, anybody get any game that's like suggestions? Because I'm not alone sitting here going, there's, there's games coming out, but I see anything I want to play right now. I'm, yeah, 60%. I'm in the majority of people looking around going, uh, I guess I'll give this another playthrough. Maybe something good will come out next week. Whoever knows premium transactions made all the money. No, oh, that, that's cool. Like, that's not a surprise. And let's go back to this cloud gaming. Because something we don't ever think about. Because here we are in our ivory, steamy towers with our data bits flowing pretty good and we got xboxes everywhere and multiple pcs just taking up extra space in our house we don't think about emerging emergent markets you know places where like it's not really practical to go out and buy an xbox or you know a new pc or like mobile phone might even be out of the question for some people but you know what i might be able to afford a few quid every month to get some game streams some geforce now oh wow Assuming, assuming these places have good internet. Ironically, <laughs> a lot of them do. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, not all of them, but many. Not, of them, not all of them, but like surprising, like that's not fair. Well, I, like that's a shit trade off then for good internet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we don't think about that uh, from emerging uh, markets. Uh, but yeah, ninety percent of playtime, just forty eight games. Man, you're everybody's digging around fighting for that ten percent. 
Yeah. You know, when your game comes out, you're like, oh, what a piece of that 10%. Because, yeah, you got the Robux. Uh, I like how they put the uh, Switch over here to its own little fuck off category. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's six titles from Nintendo. It just prints money. We can't, we, that <laughs> well, doesn't make then, sense to us. And then, and then they're even like, which makes Fortnite on the Switch even more impressive because it has to compete with all of those other first party titles from the Switch. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing. I, did you see any you, I, I, outside of like confirmation bias when I saw that? I'm like, yes. Did you see anything that like really caught you like off guard? You're like, wait a minute, what? Uh, I, I guess I, um, I, I was surprised about like the, uh, the, I guess not, not really surprised. It was, it was interesting. I had never really thought about it, but the, uh, the growth trends in like the types of games where we're seeing, we're seeing less playtime in like things that aren't shooters or action RPGs. Mm. These seem to be the, they seem to be like the, the dominant forces. And like, if you think about it, it makes sense, but like, yeah, it's not, it's not something I really thought about super hard until someone brought it up. But listen, they're they're also saying cross media exposure is a great thing. All I'm saying is that these wonks are telling you Netflix that it's a really good idea if you make it into the breach <laughs> or a FTL show. Netflix, please, I'm begging you. We need really good sci-fi, and we need it now. Give it to me, please. From the production company behind Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> I'll t- listen, listen. I'll, 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 I'll give it a pity fuck. All right. It's not a pre-existing, yeah, it's not a pre-existing IP, so they might be able to get away with more shit. <laughs> it's going to yeah. be well, set like, like, Yeah, F- F- FTL and Into the Breach are very, very story light, so you can get, you can do yeah. whatever the fuck you want, right? I mean, uh, dude, you could make like a psychological isolation horror thing. I want a, le- I want a Lethal Company TV show. I think that would be fucking hilarious. Fucking dope. If, if, if you did it like a, like a reality TV show, like a fake reality TV show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude, we're, we're only like a couple of generations where that's going to be on a fucking island. Well, the, that island where they film dangerous shit for reality. To- that's comedy <laughs> kids. Like, we're getting there. I, 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 who, who are they going to cast as like the fucking Roach Boss? I want, I want like, I want Gary Busey as, as Hi, the as Behind this door, uh, meet Mr. Crisper. <laughs> <laughs> that was once a rat. Uh, I have done some video I, game benchmarking type stuff. What am I talking about? Well, a couple of weeks ago, I saw a video and I'm like, oh, look, it's an Intel Arc. It's a little tiny Intel Arc that doesn't require extra power. It's got a 50 watt TDP and I bet it's got AV. Oh, it's got AV1 on it. And I put it up on the Wish Zone and I posted the video on um, in our Discord. And Earth Deer was like, there. I'm like, well, <laughs> I guess we're doing a video on that card. All right, fine. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. I put this up for patrons a couple of days ago. Give you a little early look at it. We're talking about AV1 on Linux with a Sparkle A310 Eco. It kind of had a hard mode on it, though, because... Mini uh, DisplayPort, huh? Two. Yeah. Not huh. one. Two. I tested them and they worked. But if you look on the box, uh, they're very proud. They pointed out. It's like, hey, man, here's a free short bracket. Not an expensive one. <laughs> A free one, and this is this is all you get in the box. That's it. There's no driver CDs. There's no packaging. You get the card, and you get that. It's ninety nine dollars, and I'm like, that's cool. Till I got to this part here, is you got to take off three screws to get the uh, full size bracket to put that little one on that they're very proud to tell you is completely free. That cover doesn't come off. You don't pay with money. No, <laughs> you you pay by stabbing the warranty void <laughs> sticker to remove. The back plate to take off the entire heat sink assembly to get to that damn screw. <laughs> Can't make that shit up. Like we we were we were sitting. Um, I did that on a Wednesday. Uh, we had people in chat like hammering on it, man. Like, have you tried? And like, this is the best solution I could come up. With. I hope I'm wrong. I hope somebody's like, God damn it, Grandpa, you fucked this up. There, like, there's I, like a really there's like a flat screwdriver you can slide under there to like ratchet dude. it open or something. <laughs> well, I mean, I heard the bullshit and I was like, well, I could take a drill to this and like this is like, that. but it's like this Audi level engineering. Like they're, I, I have imposter syndrome. Like even pushing this video out because I so strongly believe that I'm just overlooking how this is done. <laughs> or like, just like, there's no way unless like this was designed as a low profile card as it is and it was in the box and they were getting ready to do it and some executives like put a full size bracket on that bitch like but you know, like full size bracket okay yeah I, I really want to be wrong about that however 
it allowed me to answer just some basic questions about Intel Arc on Linux, which is another thing when I was doing that stream, we had some people show up and like, oh yeah, yeah, this is Intel. I'm like, why aren't you writing this shit on the internet? Because if I do a Google search for this shit, it doesn't come up. I decided to do some Google searches myself, actually provide some information. What does it take to get it up and running? I ran it on Debian testing. It's Intel. As long as you got kernel 6.6, Mesa 23 plus, good to go. Get the firmware. I got the instructions where you can get the latest uh, Intel GPU firmware straight out of them gets uh utilities non-existent i found one script which is two scripts that'll give you a little bit of information and a little bit more information neither of which can control fans and you're thinking man you know why do you need to worry about fan control on a low profile single slot blower style cooler <laughs> yeah that might be a problem however uh there's nothing you can do about it and at idle at idle it does this wonderful little thing where it sits there and it goes silent then it goes <laughs> then it goes quiet again and it goes wait i'm getting hot again <laughs> it's maddening it will drive you mothering insane and uh fortunately sparkles aware of it they're like all right yeah, okay, yeah, okay, we're, we're going to do a BIOS update to fix that. And it's incredibly shouty at full tilt. Um, but more importantly, AV1 encoding does work with OBS. So that's kind of what I was thinking about, like being able to get this as an AV1 add-in card with uh, your existing system, because not everybody can run out and buy the latest uh, AMD or the latest NVIDIA cards. And like, hey, you could drop this in, try it with Blender. Didn't work with Blender, strangely enough, and I know people have gotten it to work with Blender. It just wasn't having it. Tried a couple of different versions. Surprisingly, it worked with DaVinci Resolve. Lost that bet. Then I clicked on a button on the interface and it just froze. <laughs> Works in Handbrake, so you can definitely do some AV1 encoding. To give you an idea of, like, if you want to do AV1 on the CPU, 5600G, going to take you about 16 minutes. If you offload that to your Arc A310, you can do it about three minutes. A little Hardware. bit faster. A little bit faster. And since this is a Linux Gamecast, uh, I was going to do a separate video about this, but I realized like the entire time I was running the benchmarks and playing games on this thing, it was like fucking torture porn. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I don't want to do a whole other video of torture <laughs> porn because this is an A310. This is the weakest arc they make. All I did, there's no 1% lows here. We didn't do multiple resolutions. This is just average frame rate. I'm like, can you get to the end of it? Well, all we're looking for against the 5600G at a blistering 720p low, unless otherwise noted. And Pedro, you is this about what you expected or maybe some more, man? Yeah, no, that 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 that's about in line. It kind of surprised me how well uh, the uh, 5600G did in um, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk, then, okay, let's go ahead and just go straight to that because that's going to be the first YouTube. I, I need YouTube comment, bingo. Yes, yeah, it's like you then I remembered, up. oh yeah, no, CD Projekt Red kind of made a point out of supporting the Steam Deck. Yeah. So that probably explains that. <laughs> we're talking 39.04. First, we're talking about it. Finish the Cyberpunk benchmark. Benchmark. Good on you. Uh, 3904 for the 5600G and 31.46, which is the only game out of, we did Cyberpunk, we did Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 720p low. But it did 53 compared to uh, 47 for the uh, 5600G. And of course, Tallow Principle, high because that game's 1,100 years old. Closer than I thought, 137 for the 5600G and 144. So we're seeing like 6 to 8%. Uh, not worth $99 because it'll chase you. Although out. Talos at that resolution, yeah, you're probably bottlenecked more by the CPU. Oh, than dude, the yeah, GPU. it's, it's the, the, again torture porn, man. <laughs> this thing was just sitting here screaming. There's a video of it screaming. Go, go ahead and have fun <laughs> with it. My verdict uh, for this is they get an interesting bit of kit. They do uh, for its initial purpose because the only reason you would buy an A310 is for the AV1 encoding. There's no other reason for that to exist because it's a 64 four gigs on a 64 gig but you're not doing anything with this it's technically faster than the integrated graphics in a 5600g how much memory was on that box eight four gigs or, oh that uh they were uh i both were set to four okay yeah and um i probably will have to go back and like 
write all that because people are like, and I'm like, it's an A310, motherfucker. We we're just trying to see if it runs and no one cares, yeah. right? I'm a little sad. I was I was kind of hoping that it would be a little closer, a little more neck and neck. Uh, uh, I, I, I think it did pretty good, uh, but, you know, my, my whole take, uh, you go watch the video, interfacinglinux.com, uh, and what I wrote as just like in the closing because they got like half a product here because what I really wanted and I was excited about was an add-in AV1 encoder that is cheap as fuck. 99 bucks. Better be like 75 bucks. And you can't use this in a desktop. It is just too damn loud. Like this is not like it's if you've ever dealt with a quadro, imagine that, but shoutier and whinier because it's so small and it's single slot. So if they could take this just completely get rid of all the video stuff. We don't need video out. Those uh, two mini HDMI, uh, two mini display ports that Jordan loves so much, gone. We're going to ax them. <laughs> HDMI, gone. Don't need it. We're going to keep them. Nothing but the board. We're going to put up. Make it two slot. Doesn't have to be single slot. Make it two slot. Passively cooled AV1 add in card. Because fucking eventually, AV1 is going to come out of beta. On YouTube and Twitch is going to realize this clusterfuck that NVIDIA gave them some money to try out with is not going to work. And they're going to roll out <laughs> AV1. Whoever has an AV1 encoder on the market for like $75, $85, $95, go make some money. Go to make some money. Now, maybe because right now your only market for these cards are media encoding enthusiasts. Which sounds like some AI generated shit, but it's the nicest way I could. <laughs> Jellyfin enthusiasts, I think. Is, yeah, I is couldn't the... really find a polite way because we all know motherfuckers that you know they're great people, but like, what's their hobby? They they encode fucking video, but they watch that, it. Nope, they just sit around and encode that shit, and uh, that's great. But if you got to use this card, you got to put it in your server in your basement, covered with a blanket. <laughs> so you would sell more to the people who want maybe wanted to put this in their HTPC. And also people like if you want to do an add-in, because I did test it and it worked with an NVIDIA card. You could have an NVIDIA GPU. So you got a 20 series, 30 series, or if you got uh does do you have AV1 on your card, Pedro? Uh no. No. 6700 X AV1 decode only. <laughs> you got, got that old old great gaming card, and it's great for the gaming 1440p, but you want to, you know, stream the AV1 to the Twitch or the YouTube, plop that in. Never worry about it. And plus, you can reduce the bus from by 16 if you're only doing the video encoding. There you go, Sparkle. Call me. I want to play with more of your stuff. And uh, yeah, go check it out, interfacinglinux.com. Fair warning, there is an Amazon affiliate link because I know some people desperately try to avoid supporting independent content creators. Like, ah! <laughs> All right. What do we get? A little bit of hate mail? Yeah, just, just, just very short worry. this week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, do we want to do the plugs first or we just want to jump into it? Sure, you you do the, go ahead and do the plugs real quick. All right. Well, thank if you want to support us and make this all this shit possible, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. You can uh, become a Patreon, get into our Discord channel where we have a bunch of good shit. You can also check out LinuxGamecast.com where we have links to all of the episodes that are available. You don't have to just watch them on YouTube or Twitch. You can download them straight from us. On our con on our website, we got the contact page. We have affiliate uh, we have affiliate links for uh, Humble. We have affiliate links for Amazon. We got a store. We got wish lists. If you want to buy us stuff, if you buy us stuff off the wish list, you can send us a little note, and we'll have to read it for you. That is how. Uh, yeah, give buy buy me some fucking <laughs> Snickers bar. I'm I'm so hungry. Only you. <laughs> you. Listen, you can contribute to giving Jordan diabetes. I, I see my, 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 my insulin levels are fine. I can eat that entire box and I'm great. Um, yeah, but, uh, you, uh, Ben got that, uh, sparkle off the, off the wish list, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah. if you, if you want to make Ven do more videos, uh, buy, buy him some more shit, <laughs> buy him that green motherboard. He really, really wants it. Uh, yeah, we got, we got the merch. We got the, uh, we got the Patreon. Uh, we, uh, if you got some, if you got that Twitch prime plus sub, give us your business bucks. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Really do. Yeah, any, you don't have any, to watch commercials because I'm not the type of asshole who's going to make you watch yeah. commercials after you sub. Yeah, or just or just spread the word. <laughs> Come hang out on our Discord. Discord. That's where we're yeah. at the other six days of the week. If you are a, one of our patrons and or just Twitch, and we got the Trek Manias, we do that Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's all there, baby. We so much live and uncut versions of this show. It just keeps raining. But if you already are one of the gorgeous people making their production possible, you already know this. You're just sitting back going as you were, peasant. But thank each and every one of you for allowing us to make it happen. Now, 
Let's talk about gifts. Speaking of things that show up in the mail. <gasps> <laughs> from from Evandro, he says on episode six hundred one, Pedro says something like Evandro bought something for me at one eleven thirty, and I'm like, is it's me? Is there another Evandro? I don't remember gifting anything. Am I drunk? Probably. Yeah, no that 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 was my uh, that was my mistake. Uh, it was Eshep, not Evandro. <laughs> someone Eva, else whose Eva, name Evandro starts. Shep. Yeah, uh, yeah. Someone else whose name starts with E. But yes, it was uh, Eshep that bought me the um, the latest revision of the chair robes, the 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 purpley ones with the purple highlights. Uh, yes, Eshep, uh, you're thank dead you to me if you don't write much, it next Eshep. week saying you don't remember <laughs> buying Pedro anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the, what the no, fuck are you talking about? No, because I went back about? and I checked. <laughs> just, just gaslight Pedro nonstop. Yeah, just see how long we can keep going down. The- <laughs> No, I, I I went back and I checked. It's like, okay, so if it wasn't Evandro, who the hell? Oh, it was Eshep. Oh, okay, also starts with E. All right. It was okay. EA Sports. <laughs> hey, if you got something to say, man, use that contact form. Contact form. Yes, content form. Um, leave it is a content YouTube. form if you think about it. It is. Speaking of forms, if you got any questions uh, for content creation, multimedia production, hardware, software, anything that's doing the video pixels or the audio uh, not pixels, I got a form over at interfacinglinux.com and uh, utilize it while you can because I'm still able to just answer questions there. You know, if you got a question, you want to take the time, you got to sign up. I don't have any cookies. There's no site tracking or anything like that. And uh, give it a post. Join in. I'm over there and I will get back to you. And I've been, it feels good to solve like real fucking problems because like the barrier to entry is just high enough that the people that show up are like, hey man, and they'll work with you. They're not like, meh, thing broke. And I even had a, had a beautiful Windows user try, try to like vector in with Linux. They're like, so I'm trying to get this FireWire thing working. I'm like, all right, cool, man. Go, go, push it. And usually that chases them all. And uh, they come in and I'm like, yeah, okay. So Ubuntu Classic didn't work, but seriously, how, how do I get this working on Windows 11? <laughs> you, you, I'm like, I, I, I don't know. And they're like, aw, that's why. Ubuntu XP. Yeah, you got to install two Ubuntus. Yeah, it just a solo Ubuntu Vista. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for tonight. So, it's time to cue the music. You can always find us kicking off, sliding off, moonwalking off. Have either of you ever attempted to moonwalk? Yes, badly. Awesome. <laughs> yes, it went very poorly. <laughs> if you want to get in touch with me, just Vin Stone on X Twitter. Going to give it to you. I'm on Blue Sky. Just type in Vin. And of course, we have a federated timeline of Mastodonist over at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Hit me up in Discord. I'm in there. I'll chat with you if you got something, you got a question, you got a hint, maybe a thought. Two allegations and a bite sized bag of uh, salt and vinegar pickle chips. <laughs> I am trapped behind the man in the mirror. You can see my reflection at the Burning Fool on Twitter at uh, Frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com and at frojo.bsky.app. And if you're a Portuguese speaker, I will be doing a bit of a talk about the Steam Deck with uh, someone from the National Association for Free Software uh, that's in Portugal. So, uh, yeah, we'll be doing that on Monday. See how that's going to go. Uh, in the meantime, you can always find me on Mastodon. It's uh, unaccounted for with the actual number four at mass.linuxgamecast.com. So you're intentionally not telling anybody where the fuck to be able to watch that, right? Public access? I don't even know yet. So <laughs> is, is it going to be recorded? on Mastodon? <laughs> All right. That was some credits. I thought that was... Uh, that's, the, is, that's the new Metallica album, right? Amphibium yeah. Arithmetic? <laughs> I'm like, death magnetic? What? <laughs> well, we got to thank our executive producers, uh, Megas and our Theron. We got to thank our, our, those are our advisors. Our executive producers are Barbara, Ramp, Scott Michaud, Tom McCast, Mike G, Tomaj, David, Eshep, Ian, Kurducky, and one, two, three, four, five, six. And our little Nikki fans are Super Desto, Empty, Eggy, and King Bong not King Bong. And the Sea Monsters, Renault, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Furt, and Justin, Darkwing, System, T, Dazzing, Joe, the Kresny, and Obi-Wan. Hey, we got all these death, death notes, like, turn over, back, and go, you know, Renee, couple, Leonardo, pepper. Kim, I'm going to get some chill links this week, man, like Jason B, North back. Ranger, let's see, who else has been hanging out there? I didn't see him every now and then. And Fox Dogs, Fine, Jello, and Piper. 
Hey. Aromatic Dove. <laughs> Euthanasia Tempec. All the Blast five Stag yeah. cannibals like Carl Michael and Tom. Linux New World. Uh, Noctilus Johnny Shep Game of Tron. And Joe Diaz and Joe. Aromatic Dev again, and Guy Jorai. Thank you very much. Till next week. t pose to assert dominance. We are the t pose we're, we're the ultimate permanently t pose <laughs> like the anteaters. We, inside, inside of everyone, there are two anteaters, people. All right? <laughs> and they're making out. Fuck yeah, they are. <laughs> Dying to fire everyone. See you next week. Bye five dudes.